I want to start by thinking about data. Uh, it's been my privilege over a number of years to be helping uh, push forward an agenda that we, around the whole concept of open data. Uh, open data was, um, to many people in the audience, um, engineers, scientists, the concept of data being at the root of what you do, obvious. But the kind of key notion with open data in government was that government collected tons of information much of it non-personal. What if that information was just openly available with a license to reuse as and when? And we've made real progress, I think, in many countries now, the UK amongst them, in pushing this agenda. Everything from uh, travel data to geospatial data to spending data to the data about the uh, state of our, our, our hospitals, um, outcomes in uh, health procedures, endless amounts of open data. And this has presented, I think, huge opportunities. This uh, data enables for efficiencies, increases economic and social value, but it gives you an opportunity to hold deliverers of services accountable. There's a, the whole emphasis here was partly bootstrapped by governments around transparency. Remember MPs' expenses, all sorts of issues about would the public trust what was spent in their name. And as we've seen this kind of develop, um, of course, in the first flush, huge amounts of enthusiasm, people have begun to ask questions about, well, what is the quality of that data? What is its actual provenance? How essential is it? Have we made the most of it? Ongoing debate, for sure. Um, I'm absolutely convinced, uh, as are many in that community, we really only scratched the surface of this opportunity. That open is an extraordinarily uh, powerful concept not least, it allows science to flourish. It allows for reproducibility, for contesting of ideas. This is not some simple-minded view that the only kind of data you have is some kind of logically positivist kind of assertion that must be true in the world. Always more complicated than that. But actually, much of the data we do publish has a grounding in reality. When we first published the, uh, the transport data around timetables uh, in the UK, uh, we were told that we had a bad idea because people might use bad data. There is nothing quite as useless as a timetable application that's got the wrong data in it. So the market will take care. People's sense of credibility and credulity will take care of much data. In other areas, it's much more uh, difficult and challenging. What are we to do in these areas? Migration people will contest the figures. Of course they'll contest the figures, but let's have a sense that the data is there to inspect and revisit, I would argue, the arguments about what the canons of rational uh, debate are around the quality of the information in the first place. Can I be confident that the data out there is from where it says it is, that it is timely, that it is of high quality? Much to discuss there. And then to segue into a, a, an adjacent challenge, which is this data will increasingly be informing and uh, provide inputs to algorithms, to machine learning methods, to a whole range of new technologies emanating out of AI and elsewhere, which try and seek to make decisions, effective decisions. Now, this is not a new thing. AI has been developing decision support systems for many, many uh, uh, years, for decades, in fact. And we've seen eras of enthusiasm for particular techniques. Back in the day, we talked about rule-based or expert systems. The great thing about this uh, technology was that, in a sense, the knowledge base, containing the facts and the rules, was susceptible to scrutiny. You could ask questions of the system, you could ask it to explain itself. Why? had the conclusion been derived. And even in an era where increasingly those methods became uh, dominated by statistical methodologies, you could still appeal to an understanding of what the actual frequencies were, were those probabilities correct, that was being put into the Bayes' theorem, the various forms of new machine learning that came from a statistically oriented approach. And again, 20, 25 years ago, we began to see the emergence of a, a new paradigm, neural networks. The challenge with these systems is that what is put in are very large arrays of data, and the intermediate computations amount to massive amounts of intermediate mathematical constructs, arithmetic constructs, that eventually lead the system to find a correlation to come up with a classification, but it is far from scrutable. It is difficult to make sense of the reasoning process in a way that would stand 
the inspection in a court of law or help you to explain. I can give you the underlying um, convolution uh, methods that give rise, the weight matrices. I can give you the architecture of this wonderful algorithm. But as I offer it up as an explanation, it's a challenge. So here we face quite interesting new set of uh, issues around trust. With this new array of decision-making methods, all of them ranging from rule-based systems, statistical systems, to neural networks, how are we to hold them accountable? And how are we to be content with the decisions they make um, in our name? And what are we to do to address issues that may contain underlying disequities, various forms of potential discrimination, latent in the training set itself, perhaps? Who knows? We need a very significant discussion around how we answer those questions. And a final plea. In an age that we're told is post-fact, I'd still like to maintain that facts can be sacred. And we should fight the fight to bring back evidential canons of good practice and reasoning. Thank you.